I'm looking at 451 because there is a phrase in there that I think speaks to directly to our uh, text today or what the Lord wants us to get. Oh, Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret. Okay. I believe the Lord is going to tell us the secret today. Uh, this lesson has to do with the secret of walking with God. It begins in Luke 14, and the reader will read the first verse. Uh, I think I'll read all the way into the text 7 through 14. And it reads this way. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. I've noticed that he's invited again and again, maybe not respected, and they're being thoroughly watched to catch him in his words. But he is invited. There in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? I marvel I've got to deal uh, more with this. He deliberately healed on the Sabbath. And the tradition, uh, the elders had said healings work so that you can't do it on the Sabbath. But Jesus differed. Uh, but they remained silent. So taking a hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, and this is the correct reading of the Greek, if one of you has a child or an ox, some translations read donkey, uh, but actually the earlier translation said, if one of you has a child, or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. Now begins our text. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. And I puzzled over this because parabubble, parabubble, um, parable um, is a story told alongside of uh, uh, to make a point but I, I would even though Luke wrote the parable I would uh, explain this as, as advice when he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table he told him this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place because all the other seats are filled. Uh, in, a, in, in a table like they were eating from in those days, Roman style, it was a, shaped in the place of a U, and the head of the U was the host. And Jesus is here when the Lord's Supper is given. Notice that John leaned against his breast that means just to the right, and Peter probably beyond that. Now, when uh, this is just a side point for you to think about. Apparently, um, Judas was just to the left of Jesus, and in some reports, that's the place of honor, the most honored position. I don't know whether 
Judas stuck himself there or where he was placed there, but that's where he was. And I have a, a painting that illustrates that. Uh, that is when Jesus is in the center of the youth and to the right is John and Peter, maybe to the left originally as he sat. Judas was there to be handed the soft, the bread that dipped into the wine. Well, that's a side issue. Uh, let's pick up the reading again. Then humiliated, if the host says, give this person your seat, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Mm. Let's consider this first. In other words, don't pay yourself, excuse me, don't pay yourself too highly. Uh, be humble. And I have in my hands a book that Robert Morgan gave me, and it's written by Andrew Murray. I think he was in South Africa over a hundred years ago. And in that book, I have it marked in different places, but let me read this. Humility, the place of entire dependence on God. Now, I never understood humility. Uh, I mean, what do you say? You don't dare say, I'm humble. No, you wouldn't know it if you were. But humility, the place of entire dependence on God. I've met a man like that, Lauren. It was entirely dependent upon God is from the very nature of things the first duty and the highest virtue of the creature the root of every virtue and so pride or the loss of this humility is the root of every sin and evil it's in mere christianity c.s lewis writes on the greatest sin and that sin is pride Eve thought she knew better than God, and so she took of the fruit and then offered it to Adam, who also partook. Okay, but it was pride. Uh, the devil had spoken to them in the form of a servant. But let's go back to this humility, the place of entire dependence on God. I. I, I would say I never met many men like this or women, but I met one <laughs> entire dependent upon the Lord. And uh, so, like Socrates, and uh, Socrates, when he said, Know thyself, um, if you search Xenophon and Plato, who the best render of what Socrates was like, especially Xenophon, you will find that when he said, know thyself, he, he was saying, know that you're the ignorant one on the face of the earth. Know that you don't know nothing. Only God knows something. So know thyself, know your ignorance, know that you don't really know <laughs> the plan of salvation, except it's revealed in the scriptures. Jesus died for us and resurrected for us. 
Hallelujah. And so he was charged with corrupting the youth. And what he was teaching them was to know you, know <coughs> yourself. You don't, you don't know anything. God knows everything. And that's why the, it, it, the devil of uh, Oracle, the Ark of Devil, said he was the wisest man on the face of the earth. And when Socrates was told that, he said, well, I don't think so. And he said he searched his entire life to find one man who knew what he knew that he didn't know anything. And when he would approach the reputed wise, they would get aggravated at him and have intimate enmity against him because he said, <coughs> you know, you reported wise. Uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And he, he devastated them. He was such a wise man. And they didn't like it. That's what's behind of his drinking the hemp law. <laughs> Corrupting the youth of the of Athens by teaching them that they were nothing. All right. Uh, now, um, I, I think this sermon of Brother Helms, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. I think it reveals the secret of walking with God. Let me read a few things I've underlined. And he says, man is dependent upon God. He is, man is not dependent upon God. He is dependent upon himself. That's illusion. Every mortal and every human being that is endeavoring to find something for himself, trying to get life, that, that startled me, trying to get life. Trying to find the way to save himself will be lost. All the world that fails to trust the Lord Jesus Christ are trying to save themselves. And then he makes several points. Uh, the persons that are trusting in their own ability instead of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Even Socrates, 400 years before the Lord, he was born, I think, 469 or 569, I don't know if I remember which. But 500 years before Christ, knew that he was nothing without God. And I continue with these points that Brother Him makes in his sermon. Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. Uh, he wants all of us. God wants all of us just to let him work through us. He doesn't need men that know a lot, that have so much. He just needs men, and today we say persons. He just needs persons that are all his. If you're going to be a, this startles me, if you're going to be a saint in heaven, you will be one here first on earth. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will lead us if we will wait on him. I think the great trouble is we don't wait enough. The Holy Spirit told me in 1942, I want you to wait on me. And you remember in his book, A Voice in the Wilderness, he says he was called evangelist. God made that clear. But he said in the first uh, two years, he may have, the Holy Spirit may have said, uh, it did then say it, say one or two revivals. And it, <laughs> that's always startled me. Uh, we read on, he that will save his life will lose it. Who is it? I believe it is the person who, that fails to obey the Holy Spirit. He is following after himself. If you seek one gift more than another, you are in error. Oh, this is needed in our day. Seek Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Uh, I believe it is the person who does not believe all the Word of God. 
this and whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. I believe that person seeking station or position, the esteem of the church, for personal advantage, trying to edify himself, trying to get some place for himself, is trying to save himself. On them, I believe the persons that are seeking the approval of the Pharisee type army church leaders are the persons that will be lost. I believe that those persons that do not seek to pursue spiritual revival in the church are seeking to save their own life. Those who talk earthly things more than heaven than the heavenly witness, spiritual fellowship are among those groups that are lost. I fear they are seeking to save themselves. And finally, I want to read this. But I believe all of God's people love to talk about the kingdom. They that fear the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord heard it. And he said, I would just write them a book of remembrance. And when I come back, I will spare them as a man spares his own son. This is found in Malachi. And they shall be mine when I come to make up my jewels. Oh, how the, what a sermon. What a sermon. I, I hope you can get a hold of this sermon. Whoever shall save his life shall lose it. And then I want to return to the text because there's the second part. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may have may invite you back and so you will be repaid. Well. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you you will be re repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Now, when I read that, I went outside and I said, Jesus, I don't know anybody in our area that anybody who can afford homes like this can repay us by an invitation. And so uh, I thought, well, how have I been, or how has the church been in terms of this advice of Jesus? Well, I thought, uh, I had to think. Personally, I, when Katrina came to pass under the Bush administration, and I don't accuse Bush of anything, no. But we, we made a contribution, Kathy and I did, to the Salvation Army. For the Katrina, they, you know, they don't even know we did it. They can never pay us back. I can't invite neighbors because <coughs> they're able to repay. But then I, I thought, well, two days ago, I thought, well, Louisiana is experiencing big problems right now. I'm going to go. I made a another contribution on behalf of me and my wife to the victims of the floods and they can never, no, never pay me back. I want to say that our Christmas offering, I want to tell Texas Christ when I get there, get this. They were so right to uh, give the Christmas offering to Sierra Leone. Uh, we know a brother, uh, if he were over here, we might call him African American, but he's uh, African. But he's uh, he a wonderful ministry over there. He's the head of uh, of uh, uh, Bible study, uh, yeah, seminary, yeah. And so I thought, oh, Christmas offering! I was so shocked. Our people raised. 2,600 and then one of you had together and sent another 100 and it made it over $3,000. Let me tell you something folks, they can never repay us. They don't even know he bought food for 
people that couldn't find food. He, and he rescues people that don't have hardly anything. The equivalent of the lame, the crippled, and the blind, and the halt. And so I want to thank you all. I want to thank uh, when I get there, Texas Christ. I, I want to thank God for we give. We give our tithes. But we give our tithes to where our spiritual food comes from, to the church. But offerings, this is in the area of offerings that Jesus says, makes it clear here. It's probably the start of folks when he says, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the cripple, the lame, and the blind. Now, something comes to me. Uh, the Thanksgiving, we lived in Winfield before we built the home in Hurricane Creek. Jesus said to build that home. But we were in Hurricane And Thanksgiving dinner was come up. And I learned, I remember being informed that John Porter uh, was down in, uh, I think he, he was in the church there. And he and his wife and children were there. But because of drugs, and because of alcohol, his marriage broke up. Then he was down there by himself in a motel, uh, uh, I think in Winfield. And uh, with, with, with his oldest daughter, I remember going down and inviting John to partake of Thanksgiving dinner with us. And his oldest daughter, let me take some, folks. That was one of the best. Uh, he couldn't pay me back. He's dead now. But I'm telling you, that was one of the most wonderful Thanksgiving dinners we ever had. And so I give you these examples. I'm prompted through this to remember the flood victims in Louisiana. So I went down and made another contribution. I said, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this advice. I praise you. I thank you. And let, let me close with prayer. Jesus, we walk with thee by taking your advice and your commands. Humility is entire dependence upon God. You said, and the only person who could say this, I am humble. Learn of me. I am humble. Well, yes. He's entirely dependent upon his heavenly father when he was on this earth. Lord, help us to be. And help us to get the advice of this sermon, these texts of the day, part A, part B. And then, Father, we will be walking with thee. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.